Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 77. 77. I got nothing. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Well, Nobody's good enough to wear 77. You know, Paul Coffee, we said, right? Of course. On the Sharks. Yeah. So we do, uh, ever. We, we don't ever use those numbers. No. Right? 66, obviously the 99, of course. But uh, 88's used. Yeah, well, that's true. The double numbers are okay. Regardless, so uh, this week we'll be talking about some of the guys that are stepping up for the team, um, like Barclay Goodrow and the rookies that came in, mm-hmm. Tunov and uh, Alex True. So there's uh, there's that. Yep, we'll go over Aaron Dell and how amazing he's been and if he's a starter <laughs> or not. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll look at the week ahead and some fantasy hockey and... Uh, also, there's an event coming up. That's right. Yeah. Okay, well, you uh, ready to start the show? Ready. All right, well, do your hair toss and check your nails. Aaron, how you feeling? Ouch. Woo, child! <laughs> So that wasn't a dig on on your not having hair, by the way. That's right. I thought you were going. I wasn't really. (laughs) First thing he says was, ouch. I was not anticipating that at all. We don't rehearse this, by the way. Sometimes I just I never know what he's going to (laughs) do. Sometimes. There's there's a couple I do now, but mostly now. A couple times we coordinate. Yeah. Right. But for the most part, I'm just messing with you. Anyway, uh, we had the, uh, the, the Calgary game, right? Uh, most recently, well, not most recently, but recently we did have the Calgary game. And uh, in that game, Milan Lucic took a run at Evander Kane, uh, smashed him big time. And this is one of those things that they were talking about where the team doesn't seem to be sticking up for each other, doesn't seem to have that fight. Barclay Goodrow uh, stepped right up to Milan Lucic, a guy who is obviously much bigger, yeah. more seasoned in terms of fighting and whatnot, and he answered the bell for him. I mean, you could tell Lucic wasn't really going after him hard because he yeah. knew that he kind of outsized uh, Goudreau. He knew it was just kind of like, okay, you're standing up for your teammate. Yeah. I'm not going to destroy you here. Uh, but the hit was right in front of the Calgary bench, which is kind of like a... Uh, not that it's a no-no thing, but it's definitely a uh, in your rub it in your face kind of right. thing because then all the players are like, oh, plus you're getting tossed and all the spit and grossness that all the players right, are right, spitting right, out yeah. over the bench. This is gross. So uh, it's good on Goudreau to go in there and, and stick up for his teammates. And after the game, Bob Bugner talked about it, how it, and or no, I'm sorry, was it Bugner or was it a Carlson? Actually, Bugner and Kane, I believe, have both commented on how it was nice to see uh, Barkley Goodrow step up, and especially kind of how it, that seemed to have not been happening. Right. You know, where, especially with Kane. Kane mm-hmm. was getting drilled uh, a couple times during the season, and it seemed like nobody was stepping up for him when he's usually the first guy uh, to, to throw down when yep. a teammate of his gets, uh, gets popped real good. Uh, he, he's the guy throwing the gloves off and getting in there and, and mixing it up, saying, hey, don't mess with my players. So yeah. it was nice that it was reciprocated. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this at least a month, maybe two, three yeah. months ago, earlier in the season, saying how there's there's teams that would take runs exactly like this, like a hit like this, and nobody would go up and step up to him. Uh, the last three coaches of the Sharks, Ron Wilson, Tom McClellan, and then Pete DeBoer. Right. Those three guys were kind of, the, they took the mentality of if someone's going to hit you like that and they're going to take a penalty. Let's hurt them by scoring the power play. Now, power plays are what? A good power play is 25% scoring rate. Right. Kind of. So 75% of the time, it's worth it to hit, to get hit, right? <laughs> or for the other team to do damage right. like that. Um, so, Bugner, if, look at his nose. His nose <laughs> tells you everything. He did not. He stood up for everything, right? Anything that happened, Bugner was going to be there and he was going to. He, he had over a thousand penalty minutes in his career as mm-hmm. a player. So he's the mentality of, no, you're going to go in there and you're going to stick up for your teammate, and that brings everyone together. And in this instance, when it finally happened and things are going their way, uh, it was kind of the turning point in the game, and they said so as much as it energized the entire bench. They were really into it and really getting into you know right. energy. The energy changed, and everyone's legs were moving a lot better. And I think that's what uh, was that Eric Carlson had said, was mm-hmm. that... Uh, after seeing that, it kind of re-energized the whole group in terms of uh, getting out there and, and, yeah, it being the turning point for, for that game. You know, all of a sudden, Sharks kind of came to life and they uh, end up winning that game. I think it was a score of 3-1, to one, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, you know, they came out uh, hard. They charged. Uh, uh, they, were, they were playing strong on the puck. They were chasing guys around. It, they looked better. So, um, yeah, again, it's, the people say they want fighting out of the NHL, and this is another reason why, you know, it, it's not, I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, you know, some of that policing has to be done on the ice. Definitely. Uh, and, and this is just one of those times where you see it. You know, a guy gets hit like that and you stick up for your teammate. Uh, unless they're going to start calling every hit and putting a guy in the penalty box, 
I think the right way to do it is to you know address it when it happens. You got a player that's willing to stick up for you and uh, go out there and and let a guy know, hey, you're not supposed to be running our guys like that, and right. that ended up being the turning point in the game. A lot of people that don't like fighting. To me, they don't really watch hockey that much, and they just see bare knuckle fighting. Now, what I don't like is the stage fighting, which is at this point is pretty much gone yeah. in the NHL. Stage fighting is when you have the fourth line goons that get three minutes of ice time a night, and they go out there just to fight each other, and that's it. Yeah. Basically, that's gone. There's there's no more of that. Face you off. don't see heavyweights anymore. You don't see yeah. any of that. It's the game progresses. It's moving along. Every now and then, you see a big hit like that, mm-hmm. and a teammate comes up and steps up, and even that fight wasn't really like. Wasn't a big fight. No, he, Lucic was holding back. Yeah, because he knew he got some good licks in, but he wasn't gonna hurt him. He probably didn't want to hurt himself. He didn't want to hurt his hands, sure. you know. So, um, but still, Gaudreau looked good for doing it and standing up for himself. Yeah, very good. Some other guys that looked really good: uh, Alexander True and Maxim Latunov. Uh, they made their NHL debuts uh, two games ago or so. Well, as of this recording, two games ago, um, they ended up getting uh, in the Edmonton game. Uh, Latunov gets his first goal, first NHL goal, congratulations. Mm-hmm. And then Alex True on, a, on another play gets his first NHL assist, first point. So both of them picking up their first points in that game against Edmonton. I believe they won that one 6-3. to three. Um, Of course, the headline, McDavid <laughs> dominates the Sharks with one goal, right? So uh, <laughs> Dazzles. Was not it Dazzles with a nice dazzles? goal? I think, sure. was, I think that was hard. I'm pretty sure it was dominates, but I like Dazzles for this It was one. a nice goal. It was. But it didn't win the game. It was one of their three goals, and there were six other ones that the Sharks put in. So that to me, that's going to be McDavid's career. Is <laughs> he scores really nice goals, scores a lot of points, but the Edmonton Oilers as a team just don't go anywhere. It is what it is. I say that now and watch they're going to win the cup this year. <laughs> no. Just so again, uh, True and Latunov, uh, two nice additions coming from the AHL, the Barracuda. Uh, there haven't been many nice additions from the Barracuda lately. I know Sumella kind of jumped in the lineup. He's been Shelman, in and out. I think, and Nason. Shelman's not been bad. Nason actually has never played. Well, yeah, he yeah, was traded. He, he came, well, not traded. He was claimed. Or, or sorry, remember. you're right. Claimed yeah. off the waivers. And I think that was a marvelous pickup by Doug Wilson. I, I've said this a couple <laughs> times now. This guy... He goes out there. He was a first round pick. People don't recognize that. You know, he was a first round pick. He went through, I believe, an injury, got himself mm-hmm. back to a point where he was, you know, competing again in the NHL. And, you know, he's he's made his mark, I think, on this team at least. Now, obviously they have a little bit of a depth problem. He's getting his opportunity, but he's taking that opportunity and he seized it. Which a lot of players were not doing exactly. earlier in the season. And it's funny that the Sharks finally solidified their fourth line. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's kind of eh, so what at this point. So <laughs> oh well. At least they got something to build on for next year. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, uh, those two guys like we were talking about with uh, Latunov and with uh, Alex True. Again, Alex True is a big boy. This mm-hmm. is a six foot five, 200 pounds. I felt he had the frame to play in the NHL. I was hoping he would get a shot, a call up, and it's taken this long. Apparently, he didn't have a very good camp. But, uh, you know, he's getting his opportunity now, and it seems like these last two games, he's really making the most of it. Hopefully it goes beyond those first two games, you know, beyond the five, getting into that 15-game mm-hmm. mark, making a case for next season to get himself on that roster, because that's really what the Sharks do need. They can use some good young talent that's, you know, big-bodied, going to bang out there, hard to play against, um, and, and they don't cost too much. Like, like you had said in the live we had, yep. you know, these are those guys that come in and help make the team. Uh, make the team what it is, I should say, not just make it on the roster, but um, help make the team what it is. You need those guys who can step up and play good minutes and, and play hard against other teams and still be able to you know, make the team better but not cost the team a whole heck of a lot because mm-hmm. this offseason is going to be uh, one that I think we're going to be paying for some from free agents. Yeah, so. and after this game, uh, Eric Carlson's one that said that, you know these guys, their energy mm-hmm. that they brought, they were working hard every single shift at kind of – it flowed into what the veterans are doing and energized the veterans mm-hmm. to playing harder. Uh, they see these guys working their tails off all game, and they go, "Wow, you know." You, when you see that, especially as a player, like yeah. you know, because you play, mm-hmm. I play soccer, which is similar—not the same, but similar. You see someone working hard, that makes you want to work yeah. on their level and be hard, you know, and not when when it's you see guys kind of slacking off, or your star players, your your best guys kind of slacking off. That yeah. kind of changes the attitude around the whole thing. So yeah. what we're seeing now is kind of a culture change of the team under Bob Bugner where guys are playing with a lot more energy. Guys are sticking up for each other. Yeah. Um, the team is gelling and playing better. There's more camaraderie. And, you know, it. some guys are going to be gone. The roster is not going to be the same next season. Right. But um, the the tone and, and the whole atmosphere of the team is changing, and it's, it's for the better, I yeah. think. 
No, I agree. When you talk about guys that are you know stepping up for each other, guys that are re-energizing, not not the veter- veterans giving uh, you know leading by example, but the the new guys, the young guys coming in and energizing the veterans for getting, getting them to play better, and then that in turn is kind of a cycle because when the veterans play better, everyone else kind of steps mm-hmm. their game up as well. So um, you know, again, good on these two guys jumping in, taking the reins, and really saying you know we're we're here to to make a mark. Uh, we're here to prove a point, and they're hopefully going to be doing that beyond just again these two games. So that's that's the real thing is is how much more can they give? Can they do it for a longer period of time? And that will be uh, remain to be seen. Now another guy who's uh, kind of giving it his all right now, and we'll see how much or how long he can continue to give his all. We've we've talked about this in the past with Aaron Dell, his ability to come in and play well for a game here and there. Uh, it seems like he's kind of taking the reins as the de facto number one on the team. Now, he's the hottest hand on the team, we'll say. Now, we've always been critical of Aaron Dell's ability to be a starter because we haven't seen him string a bunch of games together and be successful. We've seen him do that and then falter his numbers drop off. Lately, though, this season at least, he's kind of been building on it. He's been getting mm-hmm. better and better with each game. He's looked really good in net. I mean, he's making these saves that are of the spectacular variety, and he's not like running out of them in other words he's got a ton of these saves on hand and he's he's been using them lately which is great yeah. and uh, he's keeping the puck out of the net and the team seems to play f- comfortable in front of yeah. him as well so they seem a little bit more confident in his ability to make the stop um i he does make some pretty like they almost look like desperation saves yeah. right where he's making those stops and you're like wow like there's a lot of wow moments in the games when you see him and i think the sharks kind of pick up on that like you know when you, when you don't have confidence in your goalie and you're like, okay, this guy's going to score on him. You're not chasing as hard to the net for a rebound. You're just like, okay, they're going to score. You know, you kind of give up a little bit. With Aaron Dell, I think they're skating a little bit harder because they know he's probably going to make that save and we're going to have to get that puck out and mm-hmm. clear it out. And they're they're digging hard. And again, part of that's Bob Bugner, I think, instilling that you need to track back and you need to help your your goaltender because he's going to. you have to expect that he's going to yeah. make that save. Um, and you're going to have to bail him out because then he's going to be in a desperation save. He's going to be out of position to make the next one. Right. So to me, I feel like he's been playing well, and the numbers are showing it. Yeah. I mean, lately, uh, we wrote down his numbers here. On the season, he's a 2.75 and a 9.13 save percentage, which is amazing because he was below 900, um, what, before Christmas? Yeah. Let, let's say under DeBoer. Right. Uh, he was under 900. So he's turned his season around and has played better and better and better. Uh, in the last four games, he's gone three and one with two oh two goals against average and a nine thirty five save percentage. Nine thirty five, amazing. Yeah, that that's I want to say elite. I'm not going to say he's an elite goalie because that's only four games. He's an elite backup. That's not. It's only four <laughs> games. If he did that over a twenty games. game or okay. forty, yeah, I was going to say even twenty games. Sure. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. When you get to 40 games, that's obviously that's elite. But. Now, there's a few things to con- uh, attribute that to, right? One of them I'll let you go ahead and say. But before he gets to that, um, <laughs> let's not let's not discount that Nabokov is the new goaltending coach. I think that has had a huge effect on him, specifically because he was already uh, learning under Nabokov when he was playing with the Barracuda, right? So having that goaltending coach with him again, I think that has a lot to do with him sparking his game back up again. Now, the other thing is, again... When it comes to team defense, I think Bob Bugner has done a much better job of getting them, again, to play as a team, as a unit, mm-hmm. playing better defensively. And I think Dell is taking a better control of that or making a better, I don't know, uh, case for himself, if you yeah. will. Taking um, advantage of Yeah, he's taking more better advantage of it, thank you, than, than Martin Jones is. I don't think Martin Jones is taking advantage of the better defense that's being played in front of him. Now, there are times where he'll still have breakdowns and he can't see a puck and he's going from post to post. And again, I have a hard time blaming any goaltender for that. But I think for the most part, Aaron Dell has been the hotter hand. Uh, he's playing better. And I think a lot of that has to do with the Bokov. And I think that the defense in front of him is doing a better job as well. So again, these last four games, like you said, he's got a 935 save percentage. That is insane. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. Uh, here's I'm going to throw out this tweet here. Uh, sorry, producer Jason, but uh, <laughs> it's from Darren Stevens. It's very interesting. He in his last f- in 15 of his last 23 games, he's been over a 900 save percentage, mm-hmm. which is amazing. That is, yeah. there's a bigger sample size of what he can do. Mm-hmm. Now, do I think he can keep doing that? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It depends on the team. It depends on the defense. It depends on the system. Uh, this is not what Bob Bugner's system is going to be 
next season, assuming he's going to be hired as the head coach. Right. He's going to want time to implement his own system. This year, he came in halfway through, so he had to kind of just tweak what was already there because it's too late to already switch everything mm -hmm. over. We've seen the tweaks. We've seen him start to finally come together. We're seeing him beating, beating better teams now, not just the bottom feeders, right, I guess right. you could say. Um, but still, uh, I, I'm just not convinced that Aaron Dell is a starter, and mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but I, I still think he's going to get traded by the deadline in the next two weeks. Um, and we just saw Jack Campbell get traded from L.A. to Toronto. Mm -hmm. So that kind of sets the market in a way. I think Dell's a better goalie than Jack Campbell is. Campbell kind of has more of the pedigree than Dell. I think Dell was an undrafted free agent. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure Campbell was drafted, so he's kind of got a little better pedigree. But he got traded along with, uh, who's the other one? Oh, Kyle LA. Clifford. Clifford. Yeah. Uh, for a third round pick and another conditional third round pick yeah, and Panthers. a player going back the other way. So what could Aaron Dell fetch for the Sharks? Probably right around there. Second or third round pick, sure. depending on the team and where he's going to and what situation The need, in. yeah. Right. Um, but I think the Sharks are going to be trying to move him. Okay. So he's making the case for himself. Now, the other thing, why he's playing so well. Right. I, we brought this up, or I brought this up in the live. Uh, he's playing for his career. He was not doing so well. Aaron Dell was not playing so well uh, the last two seasons. He's had opportunities to take over. Granted, DeBoer didn't give him as much of a chance as Bob Bugner is, mm -hmm. but the couple chances that he did have where Jones was hurt or Jones was playing poorly and they put in Dell for a sustained amount of time, he never really got to take the reins completely. Right. Um, he is an unrestricted free agent after the season. If he had put together the same numbers that he did in the last two seasons, I don't think Aaron Dell is getting, he's definitely not getting signed by the Sharks. And I don't think he'd be getting signed anywhere else in the NHL. So he was literally playing for his job, or he is playing for his job. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it. He's he's not in a bad way. He's making big saves at big times. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you need in a goalie at the NHL level. So I think that's a big motivating factor for him is uh, he's playing for his career to stay in the NHL and show that he belongs. Yeah. Well, I like that you said that, stay in the NHL, not stay with the Sharks. Just... To, right. to be able to play his future, right? You say his job. It's not just his job with the Sharks. It's his job, period, future with, in, in the NHL. So, yeah, I mean, I think that has a big part, uh, a big part of uh, the reason why you see him playing quite so well is he's much more motivated, I think, than Martin Jones is right now. So, um, hey, you know what? I'll take it. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I, I'm happy to have a goalie uh, playing really well, get some entertaining hockey in there, and if it means he gets an opportunity somewhere else, by all means, uh, congratulations on you, and good job doing that. But I guess the, the point here is that the Aaron Dahl right now, like we said, hottest hand, he is the number one goaltender for the Sharks, but as Aaron's saying, probably not a number one goaltender in the league. Yeah? Right. Yeah. Okay. You had mentioned Bob Bugner. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, Bugner here. There was the, the next topic. Uh, yeah, Bob Bugner was asked before, um, I think it was the Edmonton game, kind of about... I think the question, I can't tell if it was from Kurz or not, it sounded like his voice, but uh, the question was was about Brendan Dillon and if he kind of pays attention to all the trade rumors that's in, you know, the news, it's all over the place. Everyone keeps saying, everyone around the NHL, not just Sharks fans, is saying Brendan Dillon's going to get moved. Mm -hmm. Poor guy, man. I mean, it's been going on for over a month at yeah. least. Um, he was kind of asked about that. He was asked about a couple other things. Uh, so we're going to play this clip here uh, about uh, what Bob Wagner had to say about the whole rumors and trades and stuff right. since he's been through it as a player oh I, I think as a player you know and in dilly it's it's a good thing that uh, obviously there's a lot of interest out there i think everybody would would love to have a guy like dilly on their team for the final push and in in, you know going deep into the playoffs but uh you know, it's not a day that goes by that doesn't give us, uh, you know, his all and, uh, um, you know, focus on his job here. So he's been real, real strong at that mentally. Did you ever get traded to the deadline? Oh, yeah. Um, How many times? I'm just trying to think. I don't know. I've been <laughs> traded six times. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, there, there's been a few that very close to the deadline, like a few days before, a week before. Uh, probably the one I would think was when I was, uh, um, I was in Nashville and went to Pittsburgh. And did you always go down the list when you probably figured you were getting traded? So oh, yeah, you read every rumor, you read into it. Of course you do as a player. They'll, they're lying if they tell you they don't. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's it's always, as a former player, it's always been a good thing. You make the best of where you go, and, and uh, you get a chance to go on a deep playoff run. And, uh, um, you know, the, those kind of things uh, um, sort of you know, get your career and take you off. But, uh, you know, Dilly's been a warrior here since day one, and uh, um, he continues to be, and, uh, you know, 
um, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks. But uh, our focus is just trying to get our guys playing the right way every night and playing hard. And, 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 you know, it's been pretty good for the last few games like that. Is that a challenge to kind of keep the guys focused on the task at hand when there are so many rumors swirling and circling and things like that? Uh, always at this time of year. I think a lot of teams are dealing with that. Uh, even the teams that are, you know, uh, solidified in the playoff spot right now, they're wondering, you know, what's our lineup going to look like two weeks from now? So I think every team's dealing with it in their own way. Um, but, you know, the, the points are so crucial at this point in the, of the season for everybody, and you just can't afford to have a, an off night or two nights uh, or a bad week. So, Bugner, that was, that was a long quote, but Bugner had some good things in there, some topics about, uh, one, about Dylan. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, every player looks in the news and knows, you know, <laughs> what everyone is saying, what all the rumors are, where they're going to go. Wow, you got to have your bags packed. you got to be ready. You're basically living out of a suitcase at that point point it's terrible it's a terrible way to go but uh it's also shows a good point that these players are human yeah. like they're not just commodities they are real people and just like you and me if you would be curious if you were going to get traded at your job right let's say you, you know <laughs> there's multiple canvases and oh my gosh i might get traded over to this place in, in another state so um yeah you're going to want to know um it's interesting that he got traded six times bob bugner <laughs> did um that's that's a lot actually for a player. That is. Um, and then what was the last thing he, he talked about? Uh, um, the atmosphere kind of of teams in these la these next two weeks. It's not just teams that are going to be selling that the players are kind of worried. The teams that are going to be buying, there's going to be players on those teams that could be part of a trade going away. Like mm -hmm. you could be on a on a contender and you're you're playing really well, and then all of a sudden you get shipped out for maybe even a bigger superstar player. Mm -hmm. That's the return, you know. I mean, it's kind of it's not always. The Sharks don't usually like to trade their roster players when they were buyers, but it does happen. Um, look at Tierney and Demello, oh, yeah. right? When they got traded for Carlson, Grant, that wasn't at the trade deadline, but still, they weren't expecting that. They were doing team photos that day yeah. and media stuff, getting ready for the season, and then they get called in to say, "Hey, you just got traded to Ottawa. <laughs> you went from this team, this studded team that you're expecting to go to the finals to." Ottawa, you're like, oh my gosh, my whole world just completely changed, yeah. right? Um, so it, it's it's very interesting. Everyone's kind of on their, maybe not everybody, but a lot of players are on their toes. Yeah. And they don't know what to expect. They're dreading any kind of phone call that's going to come in from the GM. It, yeah. It, the, nobody wants to see uh, Doug Wilson right now. They probably see him in the hallway and they just turn around and walk <laughs> away like, oh, geez, I'm not going down there, you know? <laughs> like, it's just, it's a very tense kind of moment in the next two weeks. So, it's interesting. It'll be tough. Um, it's it'll be weird to see how some players yeah. kind of take it in a way, yeah. or react, or, or play. And it's it's good that Dylan, as you said, brings it every single night, mm -hmm. no matter what. He knows. He knows it's coming, but he's, it doesn't change the way he's playing. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I, I like uh, what you had said about you know with with Tierney and uh, with the guys that are you know maybe going to other teams and it changes everything in their lineup and and who's going to be. You know, bump down a line or who's going to get shipped out or whatever. Uh, it actually worked out pretty well for Tierney because he became a number one center <laughs> in the league. So uh, not not too bad for Chris. Uh, kind of like Gaudreau right there. now, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's <laughs> like the number one center on the Sharks. That's right. It's true. <laughs> but you know, um, so a couple things. One uh, with Dylan being traded. Um, I know actually Dylan follows us on, on social media so I, if you happen to be watching this uh, <laughs> Brendan Dylan I just want to let you know that if you don't make it to Monday and I don't get a chance to see you at practice um, it was really awesome being able to chat with you uh, when you come off the rink all the time and just uh, you spend some time with the fans We're, we would truly miss that and uh, hopefully that you know, hopefully he's he's still there. I want to be able to say goodbye. You know, before I get the before I get shipped out, if he gets shipped out, right? I got a feeling he will. I'll have an unpopular opinion for you in just a second. Oh boy! But yeah, well, shall I mean, I'll just do that right now. Unpopular mm -hmm. opinion: uh, If Brendan Dillon makes it past the trade deadline, I don't think Brent Burns is a part of the team at the the start of the next season, like during the draft. He yeah, can get traded. Yeah, or in I, the off season. I, I feel like because I, I see a lot of people were saying. Don't trade Dylan. We like Dylan. We He's go. a good player, right? Now this the rumors is, are going to start. I know. Be I know. Commenting down Whatever. below. <laughs> it's, anyway, during the live, we had this question, right? And people saying, you know, I, we don't want to, uh, to trade Brandon Dylan. He's a good player. And I've heard a lot of people on social saying the same thing. Um, the thing is, yes, Brandon Dylan is a good player. That's part of why you want to trade him, right? Because he's an unrestricted free agent. He can walk. Now, you may say, well, he could might sign for you know a team-friendly deal. Perhaps. Doubtful. The thing is, Brandon Dylan is gonna get a lot of money when he goes to free agency, okay? There's a lot of teams that would be happy to get this guy. He's gonna be more than what the Sharks can pay him. 
Okay, the Sharks right now, they have needs in other areas. And they're going to put their money into uh, other wingers, another third-line center if Joe Thornton happens to retire. We've got other areas to address. I mean, goaltending is one of those two, but good luck moving Martin Jones right now. Right. I think we've already beat that dead horse. So what I think is, is like I said, if we re-sign Dylan, there's got to be a move to be made to free up some more cap space. And it doesn't make sense to have Brendan Dillon on there for what we have Radim Shimmick. We have uh, Mario Ferraro, and then you've got the big three. That's five pretty solid defensemen. So it doesn't really make sense to pay Brendan Dillon the money that he's worth to basically have a solid five and six, right. right? So to me, it just doesn't make sense. That's why I said if you see him get extended or if he's on the Sharks beyond the trade deadline, something's got to give on the defensive side, and that's what would make sense to me. You also right? have to think, you know, these players are, it's their careers, yeah. right? Think about it this way. You're an engineer. And you're working for Apple. Okay. And Facebook says, hey, we're going to give you a bigger contract, a bigger salary. Yeah. We're going to pay you an extra million dollars a year. Are you going to stay loyal to Apple? Or are you going to say, mm, I'm going to switch on <laughs> over, right? For an extra mil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know. It, it's, when you're in the NHL, it's a brotherhood. doesn't matter what team you are. doesn't matter what sweater you're wearing. They don't care. Maybe, maybe there might be a team where you're just like, or the city, you're just like, eh, not really. But if they're offering you that much more money, you're thinking about your your own career and your own earnings. Yeah. You're trying to get as much money as you can because these guys are only playing, if they're lucky, they're playing after 35. Yeah. Most likely, if you're not an all-star player, you're pretty much done at 35, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And if you're not an all-star player, you're not starting in the NHL until you're 24, 22, let's say 22? Your window is shorter. So exactly. You're your that, window yeah. is shorter. You want to get as much money as you possibly can because after you're done playing, what's next? Yeah. Right? You have to start your whole life over. Not your whole life, but your career is different afterwards. Broadcasting now, or, you know. And only so many players are broadcasting. Yeah. Right? It's not like every single player is broadcasting after. There's, there's totally. not. Yeah. They're not. Everyone, not everyone's getting a job in the organization that they played at. You know, it's just you want to get the most... You want to get the most money that you can. Yeah. So people, uh, they they think like the players always want to stay on their own team. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just like trying to put some perspective here. Yeah. That when you're in the NHL and you can play in the NHL, you're going to play anywhere. You don't care. You don't care who signs the check. You don't care what sweater you're wearing. You're playing the NHL. You're not playing overseas. You're not playing the KHL. Mm -hmm. We're in Siberia on some random team in Russia, right? So it... Don't get too hung up on, on fans, you know, or don't get too hung up on thinking that players are going to sign a team-friendly deal to yeah. stay in San Jose. No, no. Dylan should be getting paid 3 to $4 million. Yeah. Sharks can't afford it, so he's going to go elsewhere. That's There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing I, I, wrong. Honestly, again, I think he'll get probably the, the latter end of that. I think he'll get closer to the $4 million than the $3 million. Exactly. I, I, because it's free agency. People lose their minds in free agency. They, they overpay every single time. Now, whether you think Brendan Dillon is or isn't worth $4 million and that's an overpayment, moot point, he's probably going to get that. So you don't, you don't roll the dice on whether or not you're going to be able to keep the guy. You have other holes to fill. Fill those holes first. Allow him to move on. Get something back for him. And there's, there's no... Uh, you know, uh, uncertainty around it anymore, mm -hmm. right? You know that he's gone. Okay, good. We have our pick, whatever we got for the guy, and we can spend our money on the areas we know we need to address. Defense, while they could be playing better defensively, they, they don't really have holes in the defense to fill. They've got guys that are that are good enough, NHL players, mm -hmm. that already play in the NHL. They're not maybe going to come up and maybe do well like the, the forwards, right? Um, that was the big problem with us this season was the forward depth wasn't there because there was the understanding that those AHL players are going to be able to, to come in and contribute. We already have blue liners that are NHL blue liners, including Mario Ferraro, right? He's been here the entire time, which mm -hmm. I'm happy to say and gloat that I was right about that one, by the way. <laughs> Um, he for was those a, you, a pleasant surprise for a bad season this yes, year. Yes, absolutely. And, and by the way, for those that, that didn't uh, see it, when Aaron was talking about uh, players and their careers and having to change what they do after they're done, I was pointing at the picture behind me here of Mark Smith. Mark Smith, NHL player and musician turned coder yeah. for a company uh, called Pager Duty. So he's, uh, that, that's his career now. Mm -hmm. I mean... How different can you he's possibly also, get? He's also on the broadcast team for a few yeah. few times. He does some kind of guest appearances, I guess. So, so again, a professional player and a musician 
goes to coding and yeah. and bracket. I mean, in other words, your your career drastically changes once you're out of the NHL. And unless you have that innate ability to just pick up coding, um, you're you're probably looking at some sort of other change. So yes, it, for a normal player in the NHL, like you said, 24 to 35, about 10 years or so, you're trying to get as much money as you can because again, you have a family that you have to support. And when the thing that you've been trained to do all your life, once that's over, you got to figure out what you're doing next. Exactly. And you need to have that money to, to carry you through that. So Brendan Dillon, I mean, for me, as good as gone, but if he's not, unpopular opinion, I think Brent Burns is gone <laughs> at next season, to start of next season. We talked about, all right, I talked about training Brent Burns yeah. two weeks ago, yeah. I think it was, and got Longer some flack that. for it. But yeah. now I feel like when we're on our lives, there's some other people that are saying it too. So it's yeah. not that unpopular, yeah. I suppose, um, mainly because of his cap hit, but... For it me, would free up a lot of stuff. For me, it's about the redundancy. We've talked about this before, but right. I'll just reiterate in case you haven't. If you're new to the show, <laughs> welcome. Um, no, I, the first thing we don't want to do is trade Brent Burns for anybody who's new to the show, by the way. But no, there's a redundancy, right? We have elite offensive uh, talent at the blue line. Mm -hmm. We have two of them. We have needs in other areas, and we have enough NHL caliber defensemen that losing Brent Burns wouldn't mean that we're bringing up all AHL guys. And there's other teams that could use Brent Burns Absolutely. as a number one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it will work out for them. Can you imagine the haul that we would get back? Maybe the Taylor haul that we would get back? Uh, just saying. No, I'm, uh, not, we're not going we there. Go. We're not going there. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so it, just to me, it, it does make sense. I'm not asking for it. I'm just saying it makes sense. Right. Good? Good. Okay, let's take a look at the week ahead. So uh, this video should be uh, showing and aired on Monday. So tonight there is a game. Yes, at, at home. home against Calgary Flames, which will be interesting because we just played them just last played week. Them. <laughs> uh, fresh in their heads, they're going to want to come out and play their game because they yeah. are in a playoff position or fighting for one, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, so they're going to need all the points they can get. Uh, the Sharks just kind of, eh, I don't want to say they gave it to them, but they that third period was horrendous on Calgary's I'd part. I'd say they gave it to them. Right, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, they just there was nothing happening. Like They were just lifeless. Yeah. So... Um, I'm sure they're going to want to bounce back and not play like that on Monday. So that's going to be an interesting game. I think you pulled up the video on this one, and we looked at the yeah. shots. The shot clock said 30 when at the like Sharks, 12 minutes or so. The Sharks scored their third goal to go up 3-1. to one. Yeah. Uh, The Calgary Flames had 30 shots on goal with 12 minutes left yeah. in the game. Uh, flash forward to the end of the game, they had 31 shots. So they had one shot. Down by two goals, they had one shot. Mm -hmm. You're going to need at least two shots to get two <laughs> goals. I, you know, I'm not a math major, but that's that's pretty bad. That's yeah. that's pretty bad. So that I mean, that just shows you right there how bad they were, how poorly yeah. they were playing that. Night. Right. Uh, now I without, don't expect them to be like that on Monday. Now they are without Mark Giordano. Right. Right. Not that hurts big time. Now that's a team that could use some solid offensive talent on the blue line. <laughs> just saying, not going to happen. But. Um, you know the uh, thing with it's not out of the, the question. It's for me. It is the the thing with with Calgary is they played Edmonton and it was a very emotional and hard fought game and it's it just drained them. The then Battle we, of Alberta. Yes. And then we played this la past week. We played Calgary and then we played Edmonton and we spanked Edmonton and then the Calgary game. I think we handed it to them like we just said that third period. They had nothing left in the tank. Um, this will not be like that. Calgary is going to come out uh, fresh. They're not going to come off of this very emotional battle with Edmonton. So it's going to be a much better showing, I think, from the Calgary Flames, albeit without their best defenseman in the lineup as well. It's funny that the Sharks went in and beat both Calgary and Edmonton last week after Calgary and Edmonton had played each other. Mm -hmm. Like they were just so mentally exhausted that they got <laughs> beat up by the Sharks coming in through, which is great. It's great I, for the Sharks. I hope we have a Montreal-Boston back-to-back uh, -back game where they played <laughs> each other the night before. <laughs> Something We need points, people. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's Monday. The next game is until Friday, then. Right. Right, uh, and that one is? In Winnipeg. Right. Um, yeah, there's a big big jump, big gap there. Yeah. So it's good good to start a road trip with a little bit of a break so they could probably fly into Winnipeg yeah. maybe a day or two early so they can get some practices in and hang out. Uh, there is the event... The Sharks event is on Tuesday night, so they're not going to be flying out Tuesday. Right. They will be at Sampling with the Sharks, which, if you don't know what that is, go look at our two episodes ago, I believe it was. Uh, we did a little spotlight on the this event, uh, along with another event. The right? 91 Club. The 91 yeah. Club. So uh, go check out that short little video if you want to learn some more information. But you can also buy tickets still, as far as I know, when I looked today. Uh, granted, today is Saturday, so... 
<laughs> you can still buy tickets. Go on there and, and check it out. It's on the sh it benefits the Sharks Foundation, uh, which they just I think they just donated a bunch of money to schools recently. Like, I'm I think sure in the they last do. Week yeah. Or two. Yeah. Um, they do great work, and they are the nonprofit arm of the San Jose Sharks. So uh, that will benefit the nonprofit, which benefits the schools. So go check it out. So anyway, going back to Friday, they go into Winnipeg, right. and then they can follow that up the next night against Minnesota. Yep, Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> Nice. I can't help but say it. I don't know. So the the Winnipeg game again. This is a team. That, now let's uh, real quick with Winnipeg. Sure. What's the one thing I'm about to bring up? Big buff. And didn't didn't you you were saying he's he's on his way back? Were you saying that? No no no. He's he, they're terminating his contract. I know. Yeah. The last time we talked about him, you said oh, no. Oh, last time we talked about it, the rumor was that he was starting to skate again and was going to start coming back, and they were talking with each other about. Negotiations are, are so coming back. Now they're talking with each other and they're negotiating the terms of their mutual uh, cancellation of contract, termination <laughs> of contract. I didn't even know you can do that. That's amazing. Yeah. But anyway, that would make him a unrestricted free agent. Yeah. And he could sign with another team, which just sounds weird how that happens. Yeah. How that works out. I don't really know the whole logistics and, and what counts. Like, does he still stay on the salary cap? Does that remove him from the salary cap? Why wouldn't teams do this with players that they want to buy out? Like, it just <laughs> yeah. doesn't make sense to me. So uh, if you know better than I do, type it in the comments down below, please, <laughs> and uh, enlighten us. So, I don't know. Are they typing with <laughs> mittens <laughs> that don't have fingers? <laughs> anyway, okay, Minnesota. Anything you want to say about the Minnesota game here? Uh, it's cold in Minnesota. It is cold in Minnesota. It's also cold in Winnipeg, so those <laughs> things uh, in common for those two games. The only thing that, that's really uh, uh, nuts about that one, again, is the back-to-back -back nature of it. So you got to go mm -hmm. Winnipeg straight to Minnesota. After having this nice, uh, was a four-day long? It was Monday to Friday, that, right? That trip, I was looking at the distance. It's almost like flying to L.A., San Diego. Oh, okay, so not It's not that far. Okay. Yeah. It's close. Okay. Anytime you talk about playing in Canada and then having to play back in the States, it seems like it's farther than... I'm sure you got to go through customs, yeah. but still, that not that big of a deal. Okay. It's not that far of a flight. All right, it's not enough. that bad. Good deal. Uh, what are you expecting out of this week? Whew, let's see. Uh, I think the Calgary game is going to be an emotional one. And from what I've seen from the Sharks, whenever they have a break, they play horrendous the night, the last game before they go on a break. <laughs> so I'm expecting them to get killed by Calgary. How about that? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The, to me, it's like their minds are on vacation. Okay. They don't care. That from what I've seen this season, because every time I say the opposite, that they're going to play hard before they go into a break. They're going to give it their all. They don't. So I'm just going to say it that this time yeah. I'm going to say they're going to get killed. They're going to get killed. There you go. What do you think? Okay. Um, I'm a little more optimistic. I think uh, the young guys coming in and uh, Bugner's message starting to permeate throughout that locker room. I think we're going to see uh, a little bit of a different showing here. I think Calgary is going to come out harder and stronger, and I think it's going to be a much closer game. Uh, they'll probably lose the lead or not get the lead uh, right out of the, off the hop there. Uh, will they lose this game? Potentially, probably, maybe. Uh, I'm leaning more towards them losing, but I don't think they're going to get absolutely murdered like Aaron uh, seems to think <laughs> over here. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be closer. Uh, hopefully they come away with it. I would love to see them come away with this. Just again, uh, we said this in the live, the worst thing that the Sharks can give their fan base right now is hope. So um, <laughs> I'm uh, kind of hoping to get my hopes up. We'll, we'll see. So anyway, uh, after that, Winnipeg, do we think Winni uh, about Winnipeg? I think the Sharks beat Winnipeg. Okay. I think they're kind of... Uh, they're still a good team. I'm mm -hmm. not saying they're terrible, um, but I think their last, their what, two week, two weeks before the All Star break, mm -hmm. they were not playing good hockey. Okay, uh, they're kind of turning around, but it's only been a few games, been about a week. So, I think the Sharks can go in and beat Winnipeg. Okay, and because Aaron thinks that the Sharks are going to go ahead and beat Winnipeg, uh, they will definitely lose. Because uh, you are a curse uh, upon them. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that or not. It seems to happen all the time. I, I like doing this segment because after I get to go backwards yeah. and see how, how wrong he was on all these. Uh, Minnesota, go ahead. Give me your incorrect guess. Um, I'm going to say the Sharks beat Minnesota. They're okay. going to go back to back and beat those two. Okay. I also think I'm thinking about because it's a back to back. We're going to see Jones. Who do you think? I think Dell plays against Min Minnesota, uh, Winnipeg. Really? Because there's a big break. And Dell's the starter. Okay. So I think that you go with your starter because he's got a break, and okay. then you go with Jones. I think jo I think Minnesota's the weaker team of the two. Okay. And you go with Jones. I think uh, I think Aaron's been wrong so many times about that. Every time I'm going the other way. Every time for sure. <laughs> so uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna say it like this. I think it's closer in, in, in Calgary. 
And uh, but I, I feel like they might actually pull that one off. They're gonna give us hope. We're gonna win three straight this week. They're gonna give us hope. Okay. And then they're gonna stab me in the eye. Yep. It's just gonna hurt so bad when they don't make playoffs. But they're gonna give me hope this week. I'm feeling it. So uh, I'll be looking for that. Anyway, we are done with the week ahead. Uh, what's next now? We got the fantasy. Fantasy hockey. There you go. Uh, we'll just do a real quick update here. Uh, here's the first league. And I think I'm in third place. I can't even remember. Um, catching up the league because it's on Saturday. It's not tomorrow. It's not updated. So uh -huh. I don't have this week's stuff up there yet. Uh, but I am coming back. Uh, Elvis Merzlikens is my savior of my season. <laughs> I have him in all three of my fantasy leagues. Wow. Because I believed in him early. Uh, Corpus Allo went down. <laughs> he had to get surgery. And so I picked up Merz Lickens because he was slated to be the starting goalie of the future of Columbus. He's right. a very athletic. He was the best goalie not in the NHL at that point. Mm. And so he came up to the NHL. I'm like, I'm jumping on it. I like it. Nice. And he has paid off in dividends because he has five shutouts. Since he started, uh, I think it was like January 1st is when he started. Wow. So the last month, he's gotten five shutouts. Um, so here's my other league. Here's League 2. And I'm still in first place and still killing it. So it's great. Um, there's, there's a bigger gap here. I think okay. I think the second league is not as active as the first league. More more people are active in the first one I than the you. second one. Okay. So the second one, I'm kind of pulling away a little bit more because of that. So that one's just in cruise control. Yeah. I also like my roster better. My yeah. team's a little bit better, so it's easier to be in cruise control. The other one, I'm making more moves because I don't really like... I'm tinkering more gotcha. with the other one. Uh, but there it is. There's okay. the two fancy leagues. Well, there it is. That's the end of the show. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, please feel free to check out the store, by the way. We had... Uh, what was his name? Uh, the, the Blues fan. Uh, Joe? Joe, yeah. Joe uh, was part of the live there, and he gave us $20 in Super Chat. I just want to call that out. Joe, thank you so much. <laughs> this is a St. Louis Blues fan who we've, I, I feel we've converted, and uh, he's a fan of the show. Pops in on the lives now and then, and uh, we do appreciate you uh, doing that. But remember, we have stuff that you can you know use that $20 towards, like T-shirts, hats, stickers, anything that you want to use to support the show, uh, and then you can rock it and send us a picture. We haven't gotten any pictures lately of... Uh, People fans, with the gear. Yeah. yeah, send us some pictures. You can us on Twitter and Instagram. You can tag us, and uh, we'll post it up on here. Uh, we did this last week. Let's do it again. Okay. If you've made it this far, <laughs> comment down below. Since we talked about Dylan, let's do Dilly Dilly. Okay. Comment Dilly Dilly down below. That's I like all. That. Then people will say, "What are you doing? What is this? A Bud Light commercial?" That is wonderful. Yeah, I like that. Let's do it. You know, one other thing I'm going to bring up, and it happened during the live. Um, there was a fan from Australia. Yes. That, oh. uh, <laughs> he's, Go ahead. He's laughing. Uh, now there's a fan from Australia, and uh, somehow the topic of Vegemite. First came off, up. first off. Okay. You should join us for the lives if you yes, haven't, because it comes off the rails. The show comes <laughs> off the rails usually at the hour mark. This is exactly what happened. Yeah. Go on. So uh, the, the fan from Australia, uh, I, I don't even know how Vegemite came up, but it did. <laughs> and and uh, apparently, we're long story short, that he's going to send us some Vegemite. <laughs> and uh, we'll be eating it on for the first time ever on the show. The live. Uh, on a live show. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do this on the recorded because no. it'll go go crazy. But yeah, yeah so uh, again, definitely tune in for the lives because they are a lot of fun. We have a lot of... Uh, good interactions with the fans and whatnot. Again, St. Louis fan uh, that uh, came and enjoys us talking and whatnot, and he's be, uh, become a good a good friend of the show, yeah, I would yeah. say. So, uh, but yeah, uh, if you're not subscribed, please do that. Hit that bell so you know when we are going live. That way you can see us eat Vegemite. There you go. Um, <laughs> anything else you want to add? No. Good to go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul and I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. bye. Feeling good as hell. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.